All right, here we go. Let's wrap it up with the uh, last section of the chapter here. We're going to take a look at multi-step factoring. Here's a pretty cool set of steps right here. Uh, sometimes you may feel like that, just going in circles. Chew on that thing for a while. That is pretty wild right there. So let's take a look at steps we're going to be doing today. Basically, we're going to tie everything together. So everything you've done so far all comes together for a grand finale here. What are the steps of factoring? So we're going to have multi-steps, a lot to do. So the first thing we're going to do is... Uh, factor out the greatest common factor. We're going to look for that GCF. Remember the GCF from that was the very first section where you're just pulling out a number or a letter or a variable, uh, sometimes both. So the first thing we're going to do is pull that out. Then we're going to look for some kind of special case. Remember our special cases uh, are our difference of squares. So that whole difference of squares. And remember they were things that looked like, oh yeah, x squared minus 4. Remember it's got the minus. It's the perfect square. You can go x plus 2 x minus 2. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and factor it out. So we've only got three steps, uh, and you're probably like, well, I was pretty, I was doing well with factoring. Why do I need all these steps? Well, check it out. Here's what it's going to look like. We are going to factor a problem multiple times. So let's check out this first one here. If I'm going to factor out a number, um, and that was one of our, our first steps, this is step one, is our GCF. So we should always start with the greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor? What number divides all these? Well, you can take a 2 out. They all have a 2 in them, and then you're left with x squared. Take the 2 out of 12, you get 6x. Take it out of the 16, you get 8. That's great. That was like the first section, but I'm not done. That's step 1. Check out what's left. We've got this trinomial here. It also factors. We Remember, we can break this down into this. So you bring your 2 down because it's still 2 times all that. Now I'm going to say, hey, what multiplies to 8, adds or subtracts to 6, it's got to be 2 and 4 right here. So this is going to be x plus 2, x plus 4. So that's why we have multiple steps. It actually took me like a double factor. I had to do two steps, pull out a GCF, and then factor it. Awesome. Is it going to freak you out if I say, hey, pull out a variable to start? Sure, we can pull out an x, and then what's left here? x squared minus 2x minus 8. They all had at least one x. Took it out, I got that. Now i got to say, ooh, does this factor? And, and it doesn't always double factor, but... I'm probably going to throw a lot in there since it's, <laughs> that's what this section's all about. Uh, what multiplies negative 8, adds subtracts negative 2. It looks like 4 and 2. Remember, the negative is so important. Who gets the negative? It's negative 4. So the x comes down, and it breaks into this, x minus 4, x plus 2. So again, I had to do a couple different steps. Let's do one more of these real quick. Uh, can I factor out both a number and a letter? Sure. 3 divides both of these. They both have at least one n in them. And what's left if I take 3n out of 3n cubed? I get n squared. And then I take the take that out, you get 9, just plain old 9. Now, before I go into my factory, and I should say, hey, any chance this is a special case? Sure, this one is definitely a special case because I know the square roots of both of these. So this turns into n plus 3, n minus 3. That is it right there. That was really just kind of the whole section. It's just combining it all together. So first plot of greatest common factor, and then we're going to factor it. So what will that look like, and how will we check our answer? Let's let's try one of the, one of these together here. Uh, I'm looking at this. It uh, looks like something's going to divide all these. So does six go into them? No. How about three? Three is the next biggest number. To divide six. So let's take a three out, and I'm left with, uh oh, two x squared. Six divided by three is two x squared, and then fifteen divided by three is the five. Thirty six divided. By, so that's great. Now this is the tricky one. Remember this. What's different? There's that leading coefficient. So I have to say, oh man, I'm going to factor, but I'm actually looking for, hey, what multiplies to negative 24, adds or subtracts to negative 5 uh, to kind of break down the factors here. So this is going to get a little crazy here. So what gives me 24? I think it's going to be 8 times 3. And then who's the negative? Well, it's got to be negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. So this 3 is always part of your answer. So bring that 3 down here. Um, you may want to write brackets. This is just like parentheses, but since um, we're kind of we're factoring this trinomial here, and this, remember, we're going to do by grouping. It, it takes a while. We got some steps here. Uh, so basically, what are we going to do? We're going to break this down as two x squared minus eight x plus three x minus twelve. So remember that this five we're going to rewrite. It's still minus five x, but we're going to write it like this. Well, why are we doing that? So we're we're doing that so we can do some kind of grouping here. Remember, we look at hey, what's the first part of the group? So Again, this 3 is still part of your answer. But when I look at the first part of the group, uh, when I look at just this chunk right here, what number comes out of this? Well, I can take out a 2x, 
and then what's left, I've got x minus 4. Uh, and then if I look at the second group over here, what comes out, remember that we've got that 3, and what is left, x minus 4. And I know I'm in good shape because these match, x minus 4, x minus 4. So now I can finally put this together. You still got that 3 out front. We're looking at 2x plus 3, the leading parts of these, and then the x minus 4. So that has everything in it. That is as hard as it gets right there. If that makes sense to you, uh, then you are in good shape. Let's say I have to check this answer. If I want to check this answer, how in the world am I going to do that? Well, we're going to multiply it out. So if I want to multiply that out, so the way I like to think of it is, go ahead and if this is the answer I got, and I want to say, hey, did that really work? Is that right? Does this equal the original thing? I'm going to start with uh, this double distribute on the inside. So I'm going to do my double distribute, and the 3 is going to stay on the outside. So 2 times x is 2x squared. 2 times that 4 is minus 8x. And then I'm going to do double distribute here, plus 3x. And then 3 in the 4 is 12. So something along like this. And what do we got here? We got 3 on the outside. Combine like terms in the middle. We got 2x squared. Oh, check it out. There's that minus 5x. It's kind of all coming together now here. Uh, we're just we're just multiplying it all back together. Then distribute again. What's going to happen? I distribute this out. I'm going to end up with 6x squared minus 15x minus 36. Is that what I start with? Sure. Check that off. I'm good to go. They are the same thing. So you can check these. Again, they take a little bit longer. So I kind of cut down the practice a little bit because they take a little bit longer. Um, but if I'm doing a match check or a test, boom, I'm definitely checking to make sure you got 100%. So you'll know your grade before you turn it in. It's kind of cool to know exactly how you did. Awesome. Let's check out the second one because there's something else very interesting here um, that's kind of come up a little bit. We haven't addressed it. It's this negative. We do not like our first term to be negative. So the factoring gets messed up when this is negative. So we're always going to factor out that negative. We want to get rid of it. So how do you factor out a negative? Well, in this case, not only can I factor out a negative, I'm thinking what also divides 18 and 8. Um, it's going to be 2. So I'm going to take a negative 2 out of this. So I don't want the lead term to be negative. Take a negative 2 out. What is negative 18 divided by negative 2? That's a positive 9. And then this is where you got to be real careful. What is 8 divided by negative 2? It's negative 4. So anytime you can factor out a negative, get, so that lead term becomes positive, that's what we're going to want to do. Now, real quick, I want to factor this. So before I factor, I look, any chance it's a difference of squares, special case? Sure. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. So this is one of those special cases where we say 3x plus 2. 3x minus 2. There it is right there. If you want to multiply that back out to check, uh, you're more than welcome to. You will get that answer. Uh, awesome. That's it right there. So that is factoring. Very nice. Can we use factoring to solve um, solve some problems here? Sure, we definitely can. So let's just do these two together. Then I'm, I'm going to cut you loose here and see how you do with them. Um, so if I'm looking at this kind of multi-step factoring, what number divides all these? I think you take a 5 out, right? Oops, that's a terrible looking 5. Let me try that again. We can take a 5 out, and I'm left with x squared. 45 divided by 5 is 9. 100 divided by 5 is 20. And I've got this thing right here. And this is another factor again. So I'm going to bring the 5 down and say, hey, what multiplies to 20? If you need your little magic x over here, what multiplies to 20, adds or subtracts to negative 9? What's that going to be? So. You can list them all. Remember, if you want to list them all, 1 times 20, 2 times 10. Oop, that looks like 16. 2 times 10. 4 times 5. In this case, it's going to be 4 and 5 because it's positive. The signs are the same, so it's got to be negative, negative. Negative 4 minus 5 more is negative 9. So hopefully we've done, you, we, you've done a lot of these, uh, a lot of practice. Hopefully that's kind of flowing. When there's no number in front, it's like, oh, yeah, I love these. These are, these are pretty quick. Uh, just don't forget, remember, you got to solve this thing. So you got to say, set each of these equal to zero. So when does the first part equal zero, second part equal zero, and the last part equal zero? Because if it equals zero, because um, it's multiplication, the whole thing equals zero. So it goes all back to that, that zero product property from the beginning. So when does the first one equal zero? Well, if I add five to both sides, sure, when x is five. That's one answer. How about this one plus the four to both sides? x equals 4. That's an answer. When will 5 ever equal 0? It won't. It can't equal 0. So if it's just a number out here, just this constant, it can't ever equal 0. So that's not going to produce an answer. So in this case, all we have is x equals 4 or x equals 5. All right, let's take a look at the next one. 
This is as hard as it gets right here. This has got a little bit of everything and we're solving it. So this is going to be a big fat problem here. It's going to be awesome. If this all makes sense, you're good to go. So let's check it out. I want to solve this. Remember, it's got to equal zero for this to work. The only time you can factor solve is equal zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 45x to both sides. So let's add the 45x. And cancel that out and you get a zero on this side. That's our goal. And then make sure you're in order. You have to go from the highest power to the lowest power. So put yourself in order here. That 45x doesn't uh, combine with any of that. Now I can go ahead and say, okay, let's factor this. Is there anything that divides out of this? So what number divides 12, 48, and 45? I always start with a 12. 12 won't go into uh, 45. It goes into 48, but not 45. Next biggest number divides 12 is 6. 6 goes into 48, but doesn't go into 45. Let's try 4. No, that's not going to work. How about 3? 3, I think, is going to get them all. So let's take a 3 out. Not only can I take a 3, they all have an x, so I can take out a 3x. And what's going to be left in here? 12 divided by 3 is 4. Uh, 48 divided by 3 is 16. And that's going to be what? 15? 45 divided by 3 is 15. So if I multiply that out, I would be back to this. So that's the first step. I factored out a 3x. Great. Now I need to factor the inside, but we got this leading coefficient. So I got to say, oh man, okay, what multiplies to 15 times 4? So what multiplies to 60 adds to 16? So you have to do that last times the first thing. What's going to make that? So I think it's 6 and 10, isn't it? That's kind of nice. 10 and 6. 10 times 6 is 60. 10 plus 6 is 16. Very nice. So bring down that 3x. Remember, I changed this over to brackets just to kind of show it's because uh, I'm rewriting this grouping here thing. So I got 4x squared plus 10x plus 6x plus 15. Holy cow. Remember, the 16 just turns into 10 and 6. And the reason I'm going to do that is so I can look at this as groups, two groups. The first group here is this chunk. So what can I factor out of this? I mean, my factors got factors here. There's a lot of factors going on here. So what comes out of there? I think a 2 will come out, a 2x. And when I pull that out, I've got 2x plus 5. And over here, I take out a 3. So, oops, let's try that again, make that 3 look a little better here. Uh, plus 3. And what's left when I take a 3 out of the second group? Well, I, it'll be 2x plus 5. That is intense right there. A lot of steps. That's why it's called multi-step factoring. But it's worth it. It's so fun when you're done. You're like, oh, look at all this work I just did. Um, so let's wrap this up. So I've got the first part is 2x plus 3. And then the other part I know I'm right is this 2x plus 5. And then don't forget about that bad boy in front. He has come along for the ride the whole way. We get this. So now this equals 0. That was our ultimate goal was for that to equal 0. Now we can solve them. So now divide this into our three little chunks here. So set each one up. When does 2x plus 5 equal 0? When does 2x plus 3 equal 0? And when does 3x equal 0? So this one's different. Check it out. This makes an answer. Remember, if you divide both sides by 3, x equals 0. So when there's a letter out here, you got this variable out here, it's going to produce an answer uh, of 0. So we've got 0. Solve this one. Subtract 3 from both sides. Divide by 2. You should get negative 3 halves. And then this one, subtract 5 from both sides, divide by 2, you should get negative 5 halves. So you get three answers in this case. Pretty crazy. That is it right there. If you are cool with that, you are good with this section. Can't make it any more challenging than that. Um, very, very nice. Let's wrap this up for, uh, for you trying some on your own here. See if you can factor the two on, or factor solve and then double check and answer. Uh, pause it. See how it goes, and you can check to see how you did. Good luck. All right, how'd you do here? Check it out. The first one, I threw this negative at you. We cannot have a negative there. That is bad to have a leading term of negative. So what I do, I pulled it out. Not only did I pull the negative out, I pulled a 2 out. So sometimes you can just pull a negative out by itself, but in this case, it's negative 2. Just be careful. It changes all your signs. So double check your signs. Make sure you got that. Hopefully that paired up there. Uh, next one, I threw a difference of squares at you. So you had to pull the 5 out first, and then you get the difference of squares. Uh, hopefully you saw that. And then number three, multiply this out. Do your double distribution first, then distribute that on top. And yes, it does match there. It is a good match. So uh, hopefully you got those three right there. That is just like the practice in the match check. Good luck on all that. Peace out.